The adult beverages are poor, the kids are asleep. Welcome to New Dad Gaming, a show about fatherhood, gaming, and new fathers figuring out their gaming lives. My name is Trevor, and I have a seven-month-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old. And I'm Jeff. I have a seven-year-old and a four-and-a-half-year-old, almost five-year-old. Yeah, I mean, like seven months, seven year. <laughs> same same ball game, right? Basically. Oh, he's so close to a year. It's 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 coming up. How how is it already a year? Like I'm so confused. <laughs> now comes the fun part where you have to have a birthday party that's different from your first. Uh, <laughs> there was uh, the the other son's birthday is coming up actually, and the daycare is going at all the other kids go nuts. So they'll oh. have Paw Patrol theme. They'll have a uh, Frozen theme. And now they're kind of looking at me, and it's like, hey, what's your theme going to be? And I was thinking, popsicle stick in a plastic bag. How's that? <laughs> you get a popsicle stick, and you get a popsicle stick. Enjoy. This is, this is an amazing theme. <laughs> All the kids will love it. Don't you even worry about it. I'm thinking <laughs> something generic, you know, non-branded. Uh, yeah, no name. <laughs> No name apple juice, everybody. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Go in the like, big bucks. Uh, it has extra associated costs, but uh, that was, it was an interesting couple of things with uh, kids. So we record this late again because our nightmare nightmare hell ride with uh, nights continue. But, <laughs> so tonight tonight's episode. Um, so firstly, I'm, one cute thing that's happening that I actually really enjoy is. Um, for any Canadian listeners, you'll remember Sharon Lois and Bram. Yes, yes. Right, and yep. Skin and Rinky Dink. Right, right. Yep. So my son's birthday song is now Skin and Rinky Dink. Okay, which is awesome. Like I really like it. <laughs> like it's, it, it, it's, it's a little <laughs> joy for me. So the, the last thing we'll do before he goes to bed is like, okay, time for your good night song. Skin and Rinky Dinky Dink. Skin and Rinky. <laughs> Did you have to look it up? Because I remember it like out, out of my head, no problem. Like it's ingrained in my soul from. Oh yeah, and any yeah. any Canadian between the ages of I think twenty five to forty five, <laughs> you you can't help but not sing that song. <laughs> and also, apologies for listeners, because now you're singing it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so that, first, so that small that's a really small note, but that that's actually a joy. That's a, that's a dad joy. I got something. Good. I get to sing. I get to sing Sharon Lewis and Bram. Uh, the, <laughs> the other <laughs> one was kind of like this public uh, acknowledgement, in some ways, or recognition, in the sense that uh, a lady saw our our you know, the old older one running around. So he right. was bolting all over the place. Just and the comment was like, "Wow, he has a lot of energy." It's like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You don't know. <laughs> it's like, oh, you should take him to the park. It's like, whoa. And it's like, huh, that, it, it, I'll say sorry, and I, I, that came out wrong. She wasn't really condescending. It okay. was more just like, it's like, oh, I mean, do you take him to the park? It, it wasn't, yeah, yeah. So I, it's not that type of story. She wasn't being okay. mean about it. It's just oh. more, <laughs> it's like, so why don't you, you know, do you take him to the park often? And it's like, I, I've taken him to the park three times today. He's like, oh, oh, okay. Well, maybe you should take him to the pool. I'm like, yeah, yeah I, I, I've taken him to the pool today. I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, so he, he must eat a lot. I'm like. No, no, he doesn't really eat a lot of food. We have a real hard time with that, actually. She's like, "Oh, so he must he must sleep really well." No, no, he doesn't really <laughs> doesn't seem to go to bed at all. We also have trouble with that. <laughs> and just silence, just staring at me like, "Uh huh." Oh, you poor, poor soul. At, at some part of it's kind of like, "Yeah, yeah." So this is a little hard. This is weird, right? <laughs> like, this isn't normal the way this guy goes. Yeah. It's not, it's not just me. You should take him to the park. That he must <laughs> he must sleep a lot. Oh yeah, yeah. He's a real real dozer. This one, right? Yeah. <laughs> I see. I thought she was gonna come at you as a, you know, you should really take him to the park because you obviously keep him inside. He's all bundled up with energy and he oh. needs to let loose. <laughs> no, sorry, ma'am. <laughs> this thing runs off some sort of energy source. I haven't quite discovered what it is yet. Yeah, we we have top men looking into this, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> but, so that was just in, like as fortunately it wasn't it definitely not that type of story. It wasn't the condescending weirdo parent coming in to give me grief, thankfully. Yeah. Uh the 
The second one, though, was the... It's this weird impulse, and I don't know if you've felt this one, too. Uh, it's I've kind of mentioned it before, and it continues to develop, but uh, my older son, he's definitely coming into his own with imagination. So he'll grab toys, plays by himself, has a great time. Yep. And he's in, this, and he's in the park just by himself, sand pit. He's got um, a couple uh, trucks with him. And he's just rolling around having a great time. Uh, so he's just playing. And I had this weird impulse where it's like, oh, I should really go over and engage him. Right? It, okay. it, it's, time to be, it's time to be a dad. Like, I need to go. Yep. Step gotta, up. and Got to interact and I got to be in there. Yep. But I kind of stopped myself and I was like, you know, if I'm if I'm being honest, like, my actual approach to this would have been leave him alone. Mm-hmm. Like, he's he's having imagination. Like, I want him to know how to entertain himself, how to play with himself, how to be by himself, right? Like, I don't, yep. don't want to be a constant entertainment machine for him. Yep. And I realized, like, ultimately, the, the drive for me to go there and engage with him was more about external pressures, where it's like if somebody else is going to see me and I'm just, like, sitting on the side as he's playing or just, you know, the... the yeah, kind of social pressures we're seeing right now, where it's you know it's like you gotta you gotta be there with your son, you gotta be engaged all the time, you gotta be challenging them and talking with them. Like I, I don't know if you, have you've kind of felt that same thing where you've caught yourself specifically feeling like you have to engage them at all times, or even more broadly, like any other kind of social pressure that you realize wasn't your own drive. Yeah, I, I've had the same feeling before, and I think you've um, kind of explained it quite well, where you kind of feel bad that you're not interacting with him, like you're missing out on something, or you could be pushing mm-hmm. him further, or giving him direction on how to improve. But what we kind of have lived by and, and read in some um, parenting books and, and consulted with other friends is that you do need that time for them to learn how to entertain themselves. Um, and how to kind of have that imagination and develop it in a way that that they know how to do it um, without your interference. Because like you said, you don't want to become something that that you always have to entertain him. And it will mm-hmm. come into play with your second, <laughs> that I will say right now. <laughs> because my, my, my firstborn, my oldest, no problem going to the basement with our play areas. He can go down there, build whatever he wants, make up crazy scenarios, whatever. However, my youngest does not like to be alone because he's only hmm. grown up with a brother, right? So he's always interacting oh. with somebody that's shaping that. So I can see almost evidence from that perspective that I think it's better that you do leave him alone at times, right? Other times I'm sure you're interacting with him. But if he's by himself and having a great time and kind of talking to himself or figuring out stuff, I say let him be and kind of explore that. Hmm. See, that's, a, that's interesting. So I think... Uh, makes a lot of sense like the first versus the second and the timing but do you, do you think any of that is actually tied to their personalities like if their birth time had been swapped so your first was your second and your second was your first or you, do you really see it as um because of growing up with a brother or not see yeah uh, i don't know that's uh, that's a hard call because i'm i'm wondering if my youngest is shaped that way because of it do you mean mm. like my oldest talks a lot he controls the conversation. <laughs> he asks a lot of questions. Um, and he always has to say something. He always has something to say. And he kind of overrides my youngest. So I'm wondering if that's shaped him to become more passive hmm. versus, you know, jumping in. When Okay, now, experiment time. <laughs> because when they're homesick, so one's homesick, my youngest, and I don't have my oldest around, he's a very different person. He's talking to me about other things. He's making up his own stuff. Now he still won't like being on his own. He'll want me to come see something. Or if I tell him to go play, he doesn't want to play. He wants me to do something with him, whether or not it's read a book or whatever. Um, He wants me there. But if I say, you know, go watch TV, no problem there. It's more about the entertainment, physical, like he doesn't know what to do. Mm. So... I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's a hard call, but I can see kind of what's happened with our families is that's what we let our oldest kind of figure out what to do, and our youngest never really had the chance to do that. Yeah, it's fa- Geez, fascinating. Just 
<laughs> it's not like there's any ramifications to how you parent. So no, it's just you now you have to just kind of adapt and go forward with it, right? So I wouldn't. I, I still see the social pressures though. Like you should be there, and people are kind of looking at you side eyed if you're on your phone or reading a book or whatever. <laughs> It's a confusing time because I, I don't know if you've ever seen this, an image online. I think some parents or teachers giving a presentation and it's like how to raise a kid like nowadays and it's take care of their physical and emotional needs as well as ensuring that they're fully developed while not over interacting, ensuring that they're well fed, but only have gluten free and healthy fats, but not too much. And you know, no sugars, da, da, da. Right. <laughs> and then yeah. for like how, how to raise your kids like 10 years ago, it's like, I don't know, feed them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not and, and not the silly argument like oh it's so much harder today but more just the with the access to information and blogs yes. and posts and videos just everything else like it's it, it, it is certainly a world of different pressure for a dad so I, it, yeah i agree i'm there with you on that pressure <laughs> but uh I'll, I'll switch it to gaming quick and this is becoming a very trevor heavy show but uh just a, just a lot happen, a lot happening on this side. So the little bit of gaming, which was uh, it's a pleasure, um, as always, right? Cool. Whenever you get the yeah. chance. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the whole update. It's like it happened. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, it is. You still just feel so. I've I've killed in total only four of the Colossi at this mm-hmm. point, and you feel so bad, man. Right? Like, that's not. Yeah. There's no victory in this it is just sadness across the board which is done with such minimal aesthetic right like this this is not over there's not huge plot there's not overarching speeches and backstory it is just like quiet sad moments where you (laughs) fill in the pieces and then you murder yep seemingly peaceful massive giants yeah (laughs) yep yep uh, I can kind of speak to that as, a, as from a design perspective, it's very well done because you're kind of thrust into that game, not knowing the backstory. You're trying to figure out why he's brought his dead girlfriend or princess into this place. You know, what has he done? What has she died of? What has she done? And then a voice says, you know, go kill these colossi. We'll bring her back for you. And you're like, all right. And then when you when you go and do that, the I would say death scene of a colossi is like this like somber music comes on and oh, it so gracefully falls down and then like goes black and, and oh, then the, the, the energy is, comes yeah. to you like it just gets you. <laughs> like, yeah, the, the music is right on point, man. Because like the when it falls, it, it, I'm telling you, like it's just not celebratory. It is no. somber. It is a loss. Like you're definitely taking, like you, yep. you, this is very much you're trading these beasts' lives for others for the for this girl that you're trying to save, right? Oh. And who are who are you to decide that? So it's all these questions that pop up. the The game has not said anything to you, and I think that's the beauty of it. Again, it's like your own imagination is filling in this story, whether or not you're a good person or a bad person, and questioning your actions. Yeah, it's. It's a wild title. Like, even if if people can play it, if it's not really their jam, I could understand it. But if you mm-hmm. can get through just killing one or two of the colossi, mm-hmm. just just so you'd have, I think, from a gaming his, history perspective, it would be meaningful because yeah. to see what they were able to pull off, even if you don't like it, I think people would respect it. Yep. But, and this was a PS2 game, so like, that's beyond how how on earth was that a ps2 game yeah even just to get out there and have that kind of grandeur happen on a on such an old console oh the memories <laughs> <laughs> they'll come flooding They're back coming flooding back jeff's ps4 like starts to whirl up in the background <laughs> <laughs> i <laughs> must kill colossi i have to do it ah, otherwise uh hearthstone man like <laughs> play oh, yeah. hearthstone again wow I will. I'm telling you, I will pitch it as a great dad game, because it's it's it doesn't matter. Like right. you can you can try <laughs> nothing to, matters. <laughs> you can try to raise the ranks. Great, good on you. Um, but it's just play some silly decks. It's challenging. It's making you think, which is fun. And it is these games are like five minutes long, in and out. Yeah. And yeah. 
there's some level of challenge to it in the sense that you're trying to raise your rank every month. Uh, you know, with the uh, previous uh, Gaming Dead victory recipient uh, from the previous time, like he got all the way up to rank five, which is unbelievable. Uh, mm. That take that takes some like real good playing. The, the thing I was going to ask you about was I think it's generally accepted that if you play something like Sudoku or chess, there's mm-hmm. certain cognitive benefits to that. That's getting you thinking about strategy. You're thinking yep. six moves ahead. It's uh, it's wiring your brain different. I was trying to wonder about Hearthstone. I'm not gonna. It's not the same. It, I, I was about it to say not the same benefits. <laughs> Where's this comparison it, coming in? <laughs> but is it is it of the same realm? Because at least like it is this strategy pieces. It is um, forward thinking and reflexive actions based on how your opponent moves or like against your game plan. Like th- there's like these parts to it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it, like, it, is there any basing on that or is it? I, I would, I would say that you, I, there's some sort of base there. I, I relate it to my family and I are playing a lot of deck building board games. So that's okay. th- basically that just well, digital like form. What? Well, name it. Um, well, there's uh, Dice Throne is the recent one we have. So mm-hmm. you um, kind of stack your abilities and roll the dice and, and see what abilities you can measure up and play that card. Um, there's another couple ones. Um, Sushi Go is not really deck building, but there's another <laughs> one called, uh, it's like Starfighter or something, or Star Realms, sorry, Star mm-hmm. Realms. And that's complete deck building where you have to gain units, um, use those units at a certain time. Um, you can gain like space stations that defend those units and you have to p- kind of plan ahead on what abilities to use at what time and what's, you know, defensive, os- offensive and crunch numbers as you're doing it. Um, mm-hmm. There's a, a bit of randomness to the deck. So you're kind of almost at the mercy of that a little bit, but there is strategy to kind of get around that. And I think Hearthstone's much the same. And I was going to mention that I have downloaded it before, I think when it first came out, and I just never really kind of, I never <laughs> fell into the rabbit hole you did, <laughs> let's put it that way. But I was thinking that I could maybe introduce my oldest to it, and I think he'd really get a kick out of it. Mm, okay. Because he can play those games on his own with me, uh, no problem. And he's really good at the math part, so I think he could do um, that little bit of Hearthstone himself and see that strategy come out. And then it's kind of that almost that digital um, gratification that comes out of it, whereas a card game, you just kind of stack the card over the other card and you're done, where Hearthstone kind of has that you know, special effects to it. Makes yeah. it a little bit more exciting, right? Man, that's kind of a tricky one. So absolutely, and I think like definitely younger. I've seen a lot of posts from, you know, my son is, you know, eight and he loves this game, or like my 12-year-old niece like absolutely loves this game. Mm-hmm. I, I have some worries about it from the gambling aspect of it. Because oh like, yeah, because you want to get like the better cards, and to get the better cards, you have to. Uh, there's milestones, and you can get money, which you can then buy cards with. But then you could use real money. Yeah, see, I wouldn't have any of that. Like he collects Pokemon, right? Which is the same deal, really. Oof. Yeah, that's like that it's is deck an building habit, and you have to get yeah. The better cards cost more money, and then you add to your deck and play. So I would lock that off. I think he could play with free cards. I know they're not going to be great. But at least just experience mm-hmm. it, maybe. What, see what's what's good is like, the thing is, like, so I don't know if he is he advanced enough that he would watch YouTube videos and then build a deck based on the YouTube video he watched. In, his, in t- a sense I, that, yeah, I totally think he could do that. Okay, because like the the deck that I'm running right now mm-hmm. is really like relatively successful, but it, it's entirely free to play. So there's all these these series of videos right now that do uh, free to play decks. Okay. So it's just like, okay, based on the, if you're a brand new player, um, you could use this deck and you can get to this level. By the time you're at this level, you've been able to buy this many packs. So likely is that you have these cards. Like it, it just brings you through. Okay. So there, so there is a, there is a free angle for sure. Hmm. Yeah. I, I have purchased decks, uh, but I think much like our, we got to come up with a, t- a dad title for this. Like when a game is good enough <laughs> that you're happy to give them money. Yeah. Yeah. Like to like, invest in it, kind of thing. Yeah, like dad spend. It, it was a <laughs> dad spend of approval, whatever. It is. <laughs> the little sound bite. Yeah, like it was. It's good enough that like I was happy to spend some money on it because it was like you know I've enjoyed this so much. Mm-hmm. Um, it's given me so many hours and it, free to play. Like I'm, I'm happy to like yeah. Here's like five bucks and give me the ten decks. Neat. Right. So um, 
yeah. Anyways, but for them, like if they can do that, I think there's a whole world of free to play stuff. And now I'd be curious if you pull the trigger on that. Yeah, I'll, uh, maybe that'll be a little new dad experiment. And just and how, see how long until he beats me? It's probably like, <laughs> it's probably a month. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ranked game coming up. Uh, but the questions for dads and their gaming, it's always difficult. But some dads have it all figured out, and those dads win gaming dad victories of the week. Gaming Dad Victory of the Week. Each week, we feature an exceptional gaming dad, and often their kids, who are doing fatherhood and gaming so well. Domination over your opponents. It's a sweet moment for any gamer, but for a gaming dad, it's all the sweeter. And gaming dad Critchens got himself a taste. The game, Destiny 2, in a player versus player crucible match, within the closing two minutes. Critchen grabs a power ammo and sprints into a nearby alley setting his sights on the room on the other side, where the enemy is spraying out heavy fire. He aims, he waits, and he unleashes his rocket, hurtling it into the enemy's space, throwing an explosion that takes not just a life, but produces a team kill, all but securing the victory. The gaming dad's holler can be heard immediately afterwards, savoring his moment, a well-deserved celebration of his defeat of his foes. With so little gaming time for a father with little ones needing his attention, grand victories like the one displayed here become all the more meaningful. And it's why Critchens is a recipient of the Gaming Dead Victory of the Week. If you would like to be nominated for Gaming Dead Victory of the Week, or know somebody else deserving, please send along the information to us at our website, newdadgaming.com. And with that, we go to this week's cheat sheet where we run down the highlights of what happened in the world of gaming. Another remaster is on the way. The long-anticipated Spiral the Dragon remaster was officially announced by Activision this week. The usual features are all included with new graphics, updated frame rate, but with this one, you get all three retro Spyro titles included, all remastered and redone. You can start controlling the little fire-breathing purple dragon this September for PS4, with Xbox and Switch versions coming soon after. And along with Spyro, the all-new Spider-Man, highly anticipated Spider-Man, will be swinging onto the PS4 this September as well. Insomniac has showcased a bunch of clips showing our webbed hero swinging over busy New York streets and teasing more details over the coming days. However, Insomniac has confirmed that there will be absolutely no microtransactions, which is one detail I am proud to make. And the frame rate is locked at 30 on both PS4 Original and the Pro. You can catch the Sony exclusive September 7th. And the award-winning CRPG Divinity Original Sin 2 is also making its way from PC to consoles this August. This game will support couch co-op split screen and up to four players co-op online. If you are in the market for a game that doesn't tell you how to play and allows you to bend the rules of the game world to your liking, Divinity Original Sin 2 might be worth a look. Dads be warned though, I have played the original and I'm clocking in at about 100 hours, so this game can be around the same, so expect to block out some time for you to be able to finish this one. Blizzard has a couple of announcements too. If you're still a fan of World of Warcraft, its seventh expansion, entitled The Battle for Azeroth, now has a release date of August 14th. This new edition promises late game additions to the world as well as new activities like island expeditions and war fronts for players to explore. Blizzard has also announced the next date for the Hearthstone expansion titled Witchwood, which will be launching on April 12th. Witchwood will feature over 130 new cards to collect, and you can pre-order now to get access to 70 packs for $50 US. You can also gain yourself a bunch of freebies by logging in anytime between launch and July 10th to claim three free packs and one legendary class card to add to your collection. And an officially licensed Street Fighter board game was announced on Kickstarter just now where its goal of $400,000 was quickly met and exceeded by rabid fans. The board game, designed by fellow gaming YouTuber Angry Joe, features exquisitely detailed Street Fighter miniatures that will only be available through the Kickstarter and not be going to retail. The game combat uses a combination of cards and dice that determine character movesets that take place on the game board that feature destructible terrain pieces. So if you're a Street Fighter fan and maybe looking to jump into the board game scene, we suggest you check, check it out before the Kickstarter closes on May 5th. And on the game release front, I think us gamers got a break from any hard-hitting releases this week, with only the real notable being Skyrim VR is no longer a PSVR exclusive, and is now available for PC users to purchase, yet again, at re- full retail price. 
Though, from personal experience, I will say it's a must-buy for any Skyrim fan with a VR headset. That's the gaming cheat sheet for this week. Catch a nap and tune in next week for another update. I have never played a Spyro game. Oh, you are so... You're in for a treat. (laughs) Spyro was not childhood for me. But... I don't know, it's PlayStation. Isn't it's, that good? It's, like, it's, it's, like I've obviously, sorry, like I'll say like I obviously played like a demo of it or like maybe at a friend's house, like putzed around with it a bit. So it's not like entirely un... Yeah. I just uh, call, call like a definitely under 20 minutes of ever playing a Spyro game. <laughs> well, it's like, because, did you play Crash Bandicoot? Because it was on that kind of yeah. level. Where right. See, but it's similar. Even that, like I... I had some fun with it, but I don't have like massive happy memories <laughs> of like, and, and are you, desperately trying to get that back. Well, you need to play this remaster. See what you think of it. <laughs> it's a platformer. So it, I don't know. It holds a place in my heart. I need to see the little dragon. I need to fly around. There's frustrating parts. I'm wondering if, if they've actually fixed them or if I remember them incorrectly and they weren't as frustrating as what I thought they were. <laughs> you were just really incompetent as a, yeah, game, exactly. a boy gamer. <laughs> oh, my reaction time was off or something. I'm like, I can't do it. So, oh, oh man, the, you need to play them. Yeah, so the, the Spider-Man, that's fantastic. Like the, it looks so good. Like the videos. Oh, so slick. Oh my God. They talked about the web slinging in it. Like they have a whole physics system for it. It's not just thrown in there where you swing from the sky you actually have your webs touching the buildings and whipping around where it should so just the details yeah that looks so that seems to be the the best capture of what it must be like to be spider-man swinging that i've ever seen in any of the games so like beautiful (laughs) if it approaches the fun of like i remember spider-man and spider-man 2 on Mm -hmm. uh, the original playstation yep and those were just those were just a riot. Like if, if it can have that kind of fun. Yeah. Have you seen Have you seen the video of Spider Man on the subway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like the fast travel. Yeah. The, was it being <laughs> in the game and he's just checking his phone? Of the subway and he's, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The reason I like that is that if, it, if that's the type of tone they're taking, <laughs> where they're having fun with it, it's not going to be like overly dark or like they're yeah. really trying to like they're really t- if they're tongue in cheek a little bit enjoying it like that that bodes really well for me yeah and and again the, with that scene like nobody's like hounding him so it's kind of like just like a cosplayer on the subway in new york city like no one cares it's like that's the perfect <laughs> thing that would happen it's just you would never know <laughs> oh I hope, I hope he has some good quips because like the some of the best spider-man games when he had his <laughs> one-liners his jokes like it was just it's always a riot so hopefully those subway scenes especially could be a gold mine for that <laughs> um, insomnia i can just email you for dad jokes so oh i'm i'm ready and willing Don't try. <laughs> I, got, I got a whole series just ready to go whenever you need the um yeah hearthstone that's cool um geez the price is wild though so 50 bucks for 70 packs that's not going to get you everything so yeah you said, i wasn't you, sure you, the math no the, see the math is screwed because so it's how many cards did you say were getting launched? 150? Uh, like over that. 130, so maybe okay, so Jeez, so 70 packs. There's like five cards in a pack. Oh, no. I have but to they're imagine. random, right? That's the thing. Like, you're going to get a lot of... There's no chance you get anywhere close to all of them. Yeah. How many packs? So it's like... You have to almost like double that price if you really wanted all the packs. If all the cards. If you did. Which is a pre-order price, so I guess they they go on sale after launch that can be bought separately. Man, but I guess you're saving a bunch doing the pre-order. But fifty US is what seventy dollars Canadian, ninety dollars Canadian, dollars <laughs> Canadian. <Yeah. laughs> That's golden nugget. I don't know. Yeah, so the mm, that's steep. A little steep for you. Oh, that's super steep for me. Yeah. I'm not gonna even approach that. Nope. The problem is like too, like it. I don't mind like a small little hit every now and then, when I want to get some extra packs. Or the adventure packs, especially, were really fun, because yeah. it's a solo. That's a solo thing that kind of turn. It feels like it turns it into more, more of a game in some senses, because it's just an adventure that you alone get to do. Okay. Not just not just player versus player. Um, but the packs thing is. 
yeah, like that's that is too. I don't mind a little bit here and there, but that's just like a yearly <laughs> subscription fee. That's not even a yearly subscription fee because you're not guaranteed the content. Right. Like the, the, if it if it was like you pay this and you get all the cards, still no for myself, <laughs> but you could understand it a bit more. But it's like that. That's just that is a very expensive casino chips. Well, ex- <sighs> exactly right. Because um, what's the difference between? Is there a difference between that and a loot box? Like, really? You're just getting no, 70 no, no, loot no, boxes? No, no, there's nothing at all. Like, yeah. you can, they have some value in the sense that you can, they have a system of dusting. So you can, when if you get a card and you don't like it, you can uh, dust it, which just turns it into, quote unquote, this like magic dust that you can then oh, okay. buy cards with, right? right? Except some of the cards, okay, you dust this one that's not worth anything, it's like five dust. The card you really want is worth 1,200. Oh, okay. Well, so it's not really doing Though anything. That doesn't work. Now, if you if you dust a card that's really high value, you get more. You can get like 100, 400. So, you know, just, just to put that out there. Yeah. So so at least there's value to it in the sense that like you're, each card, you put money to get the card. The card has some theoretical dollar value. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Yeah, that's... It's I've a never stretch. felt it's been yeah. a, egregious... I felt that they've, as a mostly free to free play player, I've felt they've done. I've never felt slighted by it. Okay. So it's just that when these things happen, these new expansions, it's yeah. I've never really, I'm never drawn to spend the money. Put it that way. Well, yeah, and they. I didn't note in the news, but the pre-order when it went on for pre-order it broke their system there were so many people pre-ordering it. so it must <laughs> they're still making money off this thing people aren't really voting with their wallets they think it's a value to them yeah. so what's cool too is like it's not it's not really necessary like there'll be some cards that become really powerful that like you'll see come in the absolute top decks for sure mm-hmm. but like the deck that I'm running for instance that I'm I'm actually have a really good winning rate like it's all it's cards from like two or three expansions ago. Like they're old cards, hmm. generally. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not like this will break everything. If you're going to be competitive or enjoy it, you have to get it. And again, that's something where I think they've done that pretty well. Okay. They have started to cycle cards out, which only makes sense because you just can't have. <laughs> yeah, there's you no know, eighty thousand cards. <laughs> like crazy balance issues coming into play. Yeah, so they cycle cards out. Although they do, they do again because they, they seem to be doing this response, quote unquote, responsibly. They have a whole separate section called Wild. Okay. So they have ranked play, and that's where you get most of the points and everything. But then they have Wild, which is just you can use anything and everything. Go hmm. for it. Ranked, you can't use some cards. Wild, you can use anything. And they have it. It has their own ladder and everything else. Okay. So so again, it's it's kind of like where they they really seem to be treating. The, well, look, they're a company. They're trying to make money. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like it's pretty upfront, like upfront with that. And the, but they're still giving you some nods. Like, look, you want to keep using those cards that you bought? Yeah. There's a whole laddering system. There's a lot of people. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Here's your casual play. And then for the pro players, maybe they go this mm-hmm. league or something. Yeah. So it's, it's all about us. That one's fine. So, yeah, not buying, but uh, not to, <laughs> don't feel slighted. <laughs> Should be all right. Uh, the, man, I don't want to keep going Hearthstone, but they had released, it was a while ago, so this is old news, but they released a mode called Arena. Wait. Okay. Shoot. Trevor, Google something. <laughs> what was the arena? Dun- so I think it's Dungeon Run. So it's called Arena Dungeon Run? No, no, no. It's not uh, Arena. Arena is something else. Oh, okay. So Dungeon Run. Dungeon Run. Hearthstone. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Dungeon Run. It's a single player thing. Okay. So you Go start against. with kind of a base deck, nothing of your own deck. Yeah. You start with a base deck, you choose a class, and you go into it, and it's just um, monsters, heroes that you have to fight. Okay. And there's up to 10. And they're crazy, like they're imaginative. This guy steals your minions. This guy doesn't react until turn six. So okay. you better kill him quickly. Yeah, okay, um, so it's like a boss battle. Yep, and there's like ten of them. And okay. there's, there's more than ten bosses, so like it's a little bit varied. And each turn you get to choose more cards. Here's, here's like three more cards. Or here's three sets of three cards that you can choose and you can get into. 
and here's a buff that you can choose for yourself. So it just, it's an interesting interplay type of thing. It's see, entirely for free. It's fun. I can see... Okay, so it, we're talking Hearthstone, but I relate it to Gwent, <laughs> which is in Witcher 3, right? Have you, have you played that? I have. Of and, course, sorry, what a dumb question. Of course you have. That's Witcher yeah, 3. I know. So like some, some things you have to play Gwent for to get certain equipment and you know favor of some people in the world. So I, I guess I could say I've played a Hearthstone-esque game and liked it so maybe i should go back well you know you know that they've released gwent as a separate game yeah i didn't really like that i did download it i didn't find it as endearing as it being in a mini game form maybe put it that way Hmm. i don't know i didn't like it on my console put it that way so maybe if i had it on my ipad or something it'd be a little bit more because i think it's free i I think it would be worth if you enjoyed gwent in the in the game, in the actual Witcher game, I think you might dig it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll give it a shot. Yeah, give it a shot. It's funny, there's like a big uh, hullabaloo for people who really want to go deep into the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Where there's a, um, there's a very famous uh, card player slash Hearthstone player called uh, Life Coach. Okay. And he actually, he, aband- he very publicly abandoned Hearthstone for Gwent. Really? So he got out. He was a he was a pro in Hearthstone. He was going to tournaments. He was winning tournaments, and he didn't like the direction and how they were handling him. So they, he quit and he went over to Gwent. And he only plays Gwent professional. Well, actually, so I haven't followed up on him. I just know hmm. he public very publicly quit Hearthstone and moved over to Gwent. Well, that's interesting. I thought it yeah. would be like more of a marketing move with CG Project Red to kind of say, "Hey, come over and play our game." <laughs> But I think they, I think they might have. It might have been a bit of a coup because I think they probably. <laughs> well, he was he. The guy was very vocal about his opposition to Hearthstone and what they were doing to them at the time. Huh. And I think they probably heard that and said like, "Hey, we got a fun game." Yeah. Or hey, you can yeah. have some uh, little creative say over here. Why don't you just come over here? When you uh, come out of the world of Witcher Three, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Way to get sucked into our world. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the monies. Hundred hours <laughs> later. Oh. Uh, there's what. <laughs> so I have some Hearthstone to get to. Jeff has some Gwent to get to, and <laughs> yeah. all of us need to take care of some kids. Thank you, everybody, for listening. This has been New Dad Gaming. If you'd like to get a hold of us, you can find us at our website, newdadgaming.com, as well as on our Facebook page, Twitter, and anything else. We'd love to hear from you. Um, you can find the podcast itself on Google Play, on iTunes, on Stitcher, and any other podcasting service. Um, if you have a dad question, if you have a show idea, if you have a suggestion for a Gaming Dad Victory of the Week, we would absolutely love to hear it. And until next week, my name is Trevor, and I have a two-and-a-half-year-old and a seven-month-old. And I'm Jeff. I have a seven-year-old and an almost five-year-old. <laughs> the line I was forgetting to mention that was, thank you for listening. <laughs> hey. Hey, you. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. No, no, Jeff. I thank them first. (laughs) I'll double thank them. Thanks for listening. Thank you. (laughs) See you next week. See you.